Two years ago yesterday, the country of Haiti was struck by an earthquake whose aftershocks of suffering are still being felt today. The relief effort has been joined by countless aid workers and volunteers, and some who are well known for other work, among them Madeline Stowe, the star of the ABC hit Revenge, who joins David Wright for tonight's Nightline interview. I want to make this right. On TV, she's the queen of mean. Then you never should have slept with my best friend. The only thing sweet about her character, Victoria Grayson... I am so happy that we're friends again. Well, it certainly appears that way, doesn't it? ...is the Dolce in her Dolce Gabbana dresses. The warmth you feel is my hatred burning through. It's all the more brutal because it comes with a smile. Always with a smile. In real life, Madeline Stowe could not be more different. 100% of all of our donations go to the actual work on the ground. She's never been to the Hamptons. She spends her spare time in Haiti. You went in before the quake. Before the quake. Have you been back? Oh, yeah. Enough that I, I'd have to get my passport to tell you how many times. For Stowe, ABC's new hit series Revenge is a second round at stardom. In the 80s and 90s, she was a movie star. Opposite Tim Robbins in Shortcuts. You mean like you were thinking? Mm-hmm. New, they call it. Opposite Daniel Day-Lewis in Last of the Mohicans. I will find you. And then you took a break. I had my daughter, and I remember something kind of uh, evaporating in me. A kind of drive that I had just dissipated. Now she's back, but playing a very different sort of character. So far, I'm not impressed. All I can see is a pretty girl with cheap shoes and limited social graces. You were playing the femme fatale, the damsel in distress, and now you're the unholy bit. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> There's something to be said for bitchdom. It's, it's, uh, it's a perversely divine state to be in, I think. Is it fun? <laughs> it's great fun. Revenge is kind of the preppy handbook as Pulp Fiction. The Count of Monte Cristo, set in the Hamptons, present day. This Fourth of July party is a Hampton tradition for 20 years. Anyone who needs reminding shouldn't come. <laughs> in a way, it's totally a throwback to, you know, those big 80s shows like Dynasty and Dallas. Where'd you spend last night, Duella? In a brewery? I hate to disappoint you, JR, but I haven't been drinking. And yet, we're living in a very different time. We're living in a really different time, and I thought that it might be very interesting for the viewers to have seen people with a very extravagant lifestyle, um, but having terrible things happen to them. <laughs> the show also stars what may be the most spectacular beach house you've ever seen. We shot in North Carolina, so it's basically a replica of the, of the house that we did the pilot in. Nice house. It is. The whole place recreated on a soundstage in Manhattan Beach, California. She gave us a behind-the-scenes tour. We're about to come in here to... Formerly Conrad Study, this is all going to be mine. I get the house. <laughs> Victoria gets it all. But all the windows and Victoria's balcony look out onto bare blue walls. Those spectacular ocean views added later in post-production. So they scan in the ocean? Yes. It's all manufactured. Even that Imelda Marcos collection of shoes in Victoria's dressing room is a bit of Hollywood magic. TJ Maxx. Exactly. And does this look like Victoria? I don't think so. <laughs> the shoes she gets to wear are a whole different story. I could put a kid through college with these shoes, right? You could definitely put them through the first year tuition. As Victoria Grayson, Madeline Stowe may be the best dressed woman on television right now. Victoria, you look beautiful. As do you. Mm. Everything custom tailored to fit her. Do you get to keep them? No, I do not get to keep them. No. <laughs> no. Really? Stowe herself is passionately private, most comfortable talking about Haiti. Through a group called Artists for Peace and Justice, she's helping to build Haiti's first free public high school. So it'll eventually have 3,000 students. And that the beauty of it is that it's completely um, enclosed in this 41-acre compound where this hospital exists. So these children are also getting health care. A cause close to her heart. You know, when I come back, the same thing always happens. I'm hungry, but I can't eat. You know? How do you mean? I feel a pain, you know, in here. I feel uh, an ache in my stomach. The people are so alive and present, and when I come back, that's generally when I fall apart. It's a world away from Grace and Manor. If I had all the money in the world, I know where it would go. She wouldn't spend it on shoes. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Hollywood.